Extending from the nuclear envelope is a series of organelles referred to as the endomembrane system. The endomembrane system is made up of the nuclear envelope, both the rough and the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, and small transport vesicles that move between the different organelles. Now the endomembrane system itself is this thin network of membranes that are responsible for creating and telling where new molecules are supposed to go in the cell. Now, since they are membranous structures, remember that those membranes are simply phospholipid bilayers like we've seen before. Uh, the endoplasmic reticulum can be seen uh, over here outside of the nucleus. You see all of these fine, thin, membranous structures making up the endoplasmic reticulum. And the endoplasmic reticulum is divided into two different portions. The first is the rough ER. Now the rough endoplasmic reticulum is responsible for making proteins, so protein synthesis, and then of course those proteins need to be folded correctly, which is what happens inside those membranes. Now it's called the rough ER because of the presence of ribosomes. Recall that ribosomes are the actual units that produce the proteins. So these ribosomes, which can be seen here as these little dots, give this membrane structure a rough appearance. And they create the proteins and then send them inside the membranes to be folded. Now the other component of the endoplasmic reticulum is the smooth ER. And this portion of the endomembrane system makes lipids, so lipid synthesis. Lipids like the phospholipids that make up all the membranes of these structures as well as the cell and certain steroids. The Golgi apparatus is this narrow band of membranes, often in a crescent moon shape, just beyond the endoplasmic reticulum. And the Golgi apparatus is responsible for taking those newly created proteins and lipids from the ER and putting some molecular markers on them and basically telling them where they need to go, either outside the cell or somewhere else within the cell. Now, how they get to where they're going is the job of transport vesicles, the final organelle to consider as part of the endomembrane system. So as you can see over here, these are membrane-bound sacs. That membrane, again, just a phospholipid bilayer. And inside the vesicle will be whatever molecule, enzyme, or lipid that is being carried by the vesicle. Now, as you can see here, that vesicle, because it is composed of a phospholipid bilayer, is uh, going to be able to merge very easily with other structures that are composed of a phospholipid bilayer. So it's better to think of these as being very plastic, very easily uh, compromised, so that they can merge, detach, uh, at will with other structures. Now let's consider the organelles associated with energy, starting with mitochondria. Mitochondria are responsible for producing an energy-rich molecule called ATP. Uh, the structures of mitochondria are the outer and the inner membrane. So there are two phospholipid bilayers, and the space in between these membranes is simply called the intermembrane space. And then the innermost space of the mitochondria inside that inner membrane is called the matrix. Now the inner membrane is highly folded and those folds are called cristae or as you can see here in the singular crista. Now the energy production occurs when first carbohydrates, specifically glucose, are broken down to produce the energy-rich molecule ATP. So this is, you know, the end result of us eating food. That glucose finally makes it to the mitochondria inside each and every one of our cells to be broken down to produce this ATP molecule. That ATP molecule can then be used elsewhere in the cell to power biological reactions. Now this process is referred to as cellular respiration and it requires oxygen. And then I want you to notice on the cristae, which is where that ATP production actually happens, is on that membrane, that it's highly folded. And so why so many folds uh, for the cristae? 
Well, this relates to that concept of increasing surface area. Uh, more surface area for ATP production, the more ATP production per unit time. Finally, chloroplasts are the organelles in plant cells that are responsible for photosynthesis. Here you see what's called a transmission electron micrograph of a single chloroplast with its complex structures inside. Down here, the typical appearance of chloroplasts under a regular light microscope. These are energy-related organelles because they produce glucose. And of course, glucose is then used by the mitochondria to produce the ATP energy. Now, plants are often referred to as primary producers because they are responsible for synthesizing glucose, which is ultimately the source of all energy for all organisms on the planet Earth. Without this process of photosynthesis, we wouldn't have the uh, carbohydrates required for cellular respiration and thus the energy to power biological reactions.